What do you think about the offensive coordinator at the new coordinators at Clemson? What do you think the job that they have done? Does anything look different at all, or is it mostly the same operation? Oh well, yeah, things look definitely look different. Um, I guess we'll start. I'll, I'll start with the offense because that would that's kind of been the thing that um, you know that, that was the biggest question coming into the year. Uh, yeah, the offense operation. You know, at least from a um, just kind of a you know a play style standpoint, it's not different. But uh, just kind of d- different personnel usages, um, you know, and I guess more imaginative play calling, I would say, um, has kind of been the difference. And, you know, it hasn't been perfect. And, you know, some Clemson fans have been, you know, frustrated with, with Brandon Streeter at times. Uh, you know, for, for, you know in, in certain situations within games, but um, – all in all, this offense has, you know, taken a, a massive leap forward. I, I think, you know, I mentioned earlier the use of the, t- I think the use of the tight ends in the passing game has been the uh, the biggest difference, and I think it's helped DJ a lot because um, that was just a non-existent part of the offense last year. I mean, I mean, and you had the same guys. Davis Allen has been at Clemson for four, you know, he's a he's been here for four years, and honestly, one of the, he, I think, just from a a physical talent. Um, standpoint is is one of the better tight ends that we've had. Uh, really underappreciated. He's probably going to be a really underappreciated guy when he graduates. But uh, seeing him get more involved in the pass game because he's a he's a really capable receiving target. And then and then also the emergence of Jake Brenningstool, uh, who was a true freshman last year. Um, he's kind of, he's gotten more in the rotation, and we you know he's he's played really well. He's he has I think three or four touchdowns on the year. Uh, I think that's been the, the biggest key in this offense, uh, you know, offense's improvement. And, you know, Brending Stool as well as, you know, he was high, he was higher ranked than uh, Brock Bowers coming out of high school. So uh, that tells you, you know, he's a he's a really talented kid. Um, and, uh, you know, Edward mentions in the chat, you know, Kyle, Kyle, uh, Kyle Richardson has also been a, a huge component in that he's uh uh, he was a um, an analyst, an offensive analyst last season. Was promoted uh, to tight ends coach and passing game coordinator, and uh, he's kind of you know, he's kind of evolved the passing uh, the the passing game a little bit. You know, just you know more. I, I guess more modern, you know, passing concepts. Uh, just a little bit more, you know, just more creative in, in general. So I, I think that's been a. Uh, I think that's been a big part of the offense's improvement. And then as far as, as far as the defense, you know, Wes Goodwin, he's, you know, in the shoes of, of Brent Venables is not an easy task. Um, and I think he's, you know, I, I think he's done a pretty commendable job so far this year. Um, it, it hasn't been without its bumps and bruises. And obviously Clemson has had its moments where uh, defensively it did has not looked good. Obviously that weight game comes to mind. Uh but I think he's really improved as a play caller of the year. I think his second half adjustments have been pretty great. Um, you know, the, the Syracuse game, you know, the, you give up, they only gave up 14 points on offense, but they were, uh, Syracuse did get some, some nice drives going there. Schrader was kind of, uh, giving them problems in the QB run game. Um, and then in the second half, it, it, that pretty much was shut down. I think Clemson had like, uh, four or five sacks in the, in that second half alone. Uh, tons of tackles for loss, had, you know, shut Syracuse out. Um, I think they only had a, like 100 yards of offense in that second half. So I think, you know, Goodwin's second half adjustments have been uh, probably the best part of his uh, uh, his game for. And uh, I think he's uh, – I think the, this Clemson defense is kind of coalescing uh, a little bit more, especially as, you know, they get more, uh, more guys back from injury, especially in the secondary. Um, so – uh, I, honestly, I, th- I think the coordinators, I, I think they've, they've done a really good job um, as, as far as, repl- you know, replacing longtime guys like Tony Elliott and Brent Venables. But, you know, it, it's never it's not the same. And, you know, there there there's been, you know, some growing pains, but I, I think they're well on their way. So uh, there's there's my there's my boy, Luke Walker. Oh, whoops. I forgot. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll we'll see sir yeah so who do you think Notre Dame should go after at offensive coordinator I was thinking Charlie Weiss Jr. at Ole Miss just because uh it would be a full circle like him running around as like a 
kid when as a little guy went with Charlie Weiss as head coach to back being in the booth as an offensive coordinator. Do you think that's that a good fit? Cool. I, I, I mean, I, I think it'd be a great fit. Obviously he's, you know, very familiar with the program. Um, but, um, and uh, wicked Bronco, it kind of stole my idea. I, well, one of my ideas, uh, you got the TCU offensive coordinator, uh, Garrett Riley. Um, I, I think that would be phenomenal. And I, I, I think that would really, I know because the you know Notre Dame fans have been clamoring for a more you know modern explosive offense you know for a while now. Um, I mean, if you know, go look at what TCU is doing right now, if and I, I know Sonny Dykes is is kind of the you know Sonny Dykes is, is is you know that that's his background, and I'm sure he has a huge hand in that offense. But you know, it doesn't hurt to get the guy that works for the guy. So. Um, I think that would be really good. And plus, you know, Garrett Riley you know, being Lincoln Riley's brother, I mean, they, they, that family, they, they know offense. It's not like he's um, just kind of a puppet. He's, I, I'm, I think he would add a, a much needed new di- dimension to Notre Dame's offense. Jeff Scott may also be available. That's true. That's true. Jeff Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That's, that's that's probably over. <laughs> I hate I hate it for him, but yeah. hey, if he wants to, uh, if Notre Dame doesn't offer him, Clemson will take him back. You know, uh, offensive analyst Jeff Scott at Clemson. That doesn't sound. Yeah, it has a nice ring to it. I'll take it. I think we stopped paying Charlie Weiss in 2017, but yeah, that was a. Uh, Bad decision by a former athletic director, but you know, wow, you it, it was eight years. The buyout, the, yeah. the buyout was over eight years. Oh my god, <laughs> it was rough, man. But yeah, That's uh, we're happy with Jeff Schwarbrick now as our uh, new AD. So. I didn't even know that. I didn't know it was that. I mean, I knew they bought him out, but I didn't know it, it was it bad. Lasted it was Good bad. lord, I thought Florida State, you know, and I thought Florida State was paying, you know, still paying Willie Taggart. You know, I, I thought that was insane, but. Wow. You know, we're happy now with Marcus Freeman, though. So as long as we get this OC higher right, I feel like we're going to be contending soon and not just being in the playoff, but actually trying to win in the playoff. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I like that idea. Go, Yeah, go get Jimbo. That's a great idea. Um. <clears throat> Do you think I mean, Jimbo if, if lasts? You get Jimbo, if, if you can get uh, Jameis Winston and, like to have another year of eligibility and he'd come down and, and play in that offense, then maybe. Do you think Jimbo uh, gets fired at? No. No. They're, yeah. they're stuck. They're stuck with him for now. Um, mm-hmm. it's, this, it's the bed they made. They got to they gotta lay in it. That's yeah. There's I know you know that it's like A and M has money, but that is a uh, stupid amount of money, and um, that's uh, you're if you do that, you're 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 you know pretty much setting yourself back like three or four years as far as being where you want to be. You know A and M is trying. They're they're the you know the way they're investing, they're trying to compete for you know SEC national championships, and if you you know, you, you fire your head coach, you know, and, and you, with this much, you know, left on his contract, you're uh, uh, that kind of stuff really does numbers to your roster. You're going to have a ton of departures um, and you're kind of, you know, that highly touted, you know, those highly touted recruiting classes you've been pulling in, you know, you can say goodbye to those. Um, so. I actually wouldn't mind Scott Frost. If he could recruit, but do you think he doesn't like that's the thing he doesn't like recruiting from what well he was a very lazy recruiter. Okay, I don't know. So what's up to if you if you hire guys under him that will recruit for him, then maybe, but he I don't don't expect him to put up a whole lot of work. What's up, Tim? That sounds like Brian Kelly, honestly. Bro, if if we beat you guys, if Notre Dame beats Clemson and then uh, Bama takes it to LSU, that'll be a fun night in South Bend. But 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it would be. Mm -hmm. um, for my for my sake, I, I hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, no, I can just imagine, like, if we're up, like, the score, seeing, uh, hearing, hearing right. it. Because I'm going to be at right, the game. That, that's right, Mark. <laughs> he misses mm -hmm. BK so much. <laughs> if I like here, if we're up and then uh, they put the score like Bama twenty eight, LSU three, like the car whole car place is probably just gonna go crazy. That would be a fun moment if that happens. But I'm sure it would. <laughs> I'd pay to be like a fly on the wall there and just that. Uh, it kind of, when I was at the um, the uh, the NC State game, uh, mm -hmm. They when they were showing that uh, Georgia and Missouri were playing at the same time, and Missouri was and when when it showed that you know Georgia had finally taken the lead, you, the, the lead you could hear a collective oh <laughs> oh it was it was it was pretty funny. Uh, I wish you guys played every year. You and Georgia is there any chance that could happen? I do too, but Georgia and ask Georgia why that series ended. Ask ask Georgia because they uh, they didn't they they, they were uh, I, I'm not gonna say they weren't they weren't scared because that would be kind of disingenuous considering they lead the series but they basically what happened was when the SEC expanded the conference schedule they were like well we don't want to play both uh, you know Clemson and South Carolina every year when so. Um, especially when South Carolina became a conference opponent and they were like, okay, we're just going to drop you from the schedule. I was like, oh, all right, so be it. And so that's kind of how it ended. But, um, it's a, you know, especially back in the eighties, it was, it was one of the premier rivalries and, you know, in, in college football for a time. So, uh, I always enjoy playing Georgia, Wish we wish we played them more. I mean, and we will, we play them. Uh, and we have, a, I think we have a home and home later in the decade. We play them. In 2024, I think in Atlanta. Uh, so, you know, they, they've uh, they, they're, they're kind of doing stuff to bring it back, and we played them twice um, last decade too. So, I feel like he'll get booed. I don't know if he would get banned though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll definitely get banned. Uh, uh, yeah, booed. Uh, man, if LSU won that game, that would. Yeah, that, that would that would flip college football on its head for sure, yeah, uh, and flip probably flip you on your head because <laughs> I would die inside. I would die yeah. inside. It's like you couldn't. Well, do I would this be here. a big fan of whoever wins that Georgia Tennessee game for the. Oh yeah, I don't know who I want to win that game to be honest. Because well, I, I mean traditionally Clemson has no like history with you know, relevant history with Tennessee is, it's not like there's a rivalry there, but man, I don't know. Part of me just wants to, the, 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 the Tennessee fans have gotten a little, uh, got, got, they've gotten a little excited. That's, that's all I'm going to say. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that they got humbled a little bit, even if it's against Georgia, who Clemson does have a, a, a rivalry with. So. Is there, um, do you think there was any – was there ever any history of Clemson going to the SEC? Or? Yeah. Um, when, when the SEC, uh, SEC expanded, um, well, I, there, there's, there's a lot of stories of, you know, how, how it kind of went down. But there were, you know, um, the, I think Florida State was also involved, but I, I know that Clemson. Uh, there were some talks of, of Clemson potentially joining. South Carolina vetoed it, and they they basically they basically had within the contract they had the right you know the right of first refusal, and um, so there was some. I think back you know back in the nineties there was a possibility, but um, yeah. Yeah, see, Clemson twenty two in the yeah. You know, I don't I don't know all the details, but there was some um, there was definitely some some talks going on of that possibly happening, and it got shut down. Yeah. Okay. What's the thing with the Death Valleys? Also, 
By the way, that that would be that would be awful to hear. That, <laughs> what you, that, that you know, we, we talked we talked about things that you could you could dedicate a whole podcast to. We could dedicate or a whole show to. Yeah, you could definitely dedicate a whole show to in the history of who's the real Death Valley. Uh, bottom bottom line is, Clemson had the name first. Now, whether that matters to people, whether that matters, you know, it it, it is what it is. Um, but in, in LSU. Clemson got the name back in, you know, back in the forties when uh, an opposing coach came down there and, and kind of coined the term. And since then it was a, it, it, since then it, it just kind of stuck. Um, and then in LSU, the story goes that, you know, in the, in the, you know, LSU always called their stadium Death Valley, D-E-A-F, because it was so loud and it kind of morphed into Death Valley over time. Um, so uh, that's, that's been a kind of a point of contention, you know. It's, LSU certainly had, you know, the, their their stadium is 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 very hostile. Obviously, they have a great, one of the best environments in college football. So, you know, I don't, you, you know, it's if you want to, you know, if you want to call it Death Valley, I mean, it's it, it certainly you know backs it backs the name up. So, um, even though it's not technically in a valley like like Clemson Clemson's is Clemson's that at least at the base of a giant hill so uh but hey ge- geographically it, it doesn't really matter but you know clemson and lsu have a uh yeah mark you said let's set that one up for the offseason battle of the death valleys yeah that they actually have a clemson and lsu have a home and home coming up in uh i don't remember the years i think it's 25 and 26 but i could be wrong uh so that, that'll be interesting because neither neither team has played each other in uh the uh, the other's home stadium, so that'll be a uh, that'll be a, that'll be an interesting one. Um, and they they've played in New Orleans three times, so but they've never but they've never played in the other's uh, home stadium. I, the tiger at the middle of the field does look cool, though. I'll give them that. Oh yeah, no, that's that's an iconic yeah, that's an iconic logo. It's, it's really cool. I like it. And they have a live tiger, Mike. 